But I remember the first audition was in a small trailer on the uh, 20th century lot. Originally in the screenplay, Pris was supposed to be sort of dangling on, on these uh, rings, you know, the gymnastic rings. And there wasn't any kind of gymnastic stuff incorporated into the fight. It was just taking place in a gymnasium. And so um, I had been a gymnast as a kid in school. And so I suggested to Ridley that I could do gymnastics and that maybe I could put that into the fight sequence. And so I remember he asked me to show him what gymnastics meant. <laughs> and what that was, and, and so I did like a back walkover or something like that for him in the trailer, and, and that was it. I met Daryl, and Daryl was pretty well it. I, I liked Daryl immediately on meeting her. She's kind of, you know, perfect physically. Um, she's bright, she's got this quirky side to her. We were called to do screen tests, and there were four other women who were testing for the part, all completely different from me. What's your name? Chris. Stacy Nelkin, perfect, tiny, you know, like little curls and most beautiful face in this, you know, va va voom body, but like small and perfectly proportioned. I do remember the set being exceedingly hey. smoky. It's not like being in a bar, it's worse, at least in those days. <coughs> Ridley must have said that was part of it. The environment had already started to, you know, break down the lungs and all of those things. Everybody who was screen testing got to create their own character, you know, had days to meet with the makeup team and the wardrobe team. And I remember I had found that wig in a basket full of stuff and, you know, it, it looked cool and then kind of built from that. And, and, and I had seen um, Werner Herzog's Nosferatu and I remembered the sort of puttied out eyebrows and the black circle, you know, black hollow eyes of Klaus Kinski. And so I was inspired by that, kind of, and so I puttied out my eyebrows and did that sort of black thing on my eyes. The uh, screen test process was an entire day um, and night. <laughs> and it was a pretty early call to get in hair and makeup and everything, and we were pretty much kept isolated from one another. It was, it was very, very well and thoroughly produced. They had a big dinner set on a sound stage like they do on you know, movie lunch breaks and I actually went in for that and that's the first time that I got to see the other girls and Monique Vandeven looked like a doll and you know she was all like sort of beautiful new doll woman and I was like a freak. <laughs> It was like a total freak show. I was like giant because I had platform shoes on and ripped up stockings and this fright wig and, you know, black eyes. And I just started crying, you know. I was a teenage girl and I just looked around and I thought, oh my God, I've made myself into a monster. <laughs> and everybody else looks so beautiful. Hi. Ridley just didn't think, because I was so tiny, that I could conceivably beat up Harrison Ford. And he's right, you know, I mean, I, I, I buy that. So that was, you know, the big letdown because I do think it was down to me and, you know, just a few other people. I think there was a bit of time that passed before then they decided they wanted to add this part that was in the book of this fifth replicant, Mary. And Mary was a fabulous part. It was a beautiful scene. She was dying, you know, and she was extremely vulnerable. She had already completely broken down. And at the time, the writer's strike had happened, and it wasn't good. Everybody was picketing and, you know, rumors, and, you know, it was a very bad time. And uh, I was calling Michael and actually talking to him on the phone, him saying, well, darling, you know, we haven't gotten to your part yet, and, you know, the strike has gone on, and, you know, and the whole thing. and. Uh, and, you know, we haven't uh, gotten there and we're gonna have to cut your part out. And uh, it was just, it was devastating. God, she must have been so disappointed, but we had to, we stared at the schedule, and I'd finished my casting sessions. Everyone was in place. And we looked at the budget and I said, Shh, I gotta cut things out. We can't even build this, we can't even schedule this. So she was, would be one of the replicants who would die there would be a replicant's um, wake. It was a bit of like the wake of the vampires. It'd be really cool. I was asked at the end of the days, you know, who I thought 
was the best for each role because I'd then rehearsed with each one of them. So I knew a little bit about how they were approaching things as well as doing the actual test. And I said, well, it's hands down Daryl Hannah for Pris. And it was hands down Nina Axelrod for uh, Rachel. And really said, well, I think Sean Young. Harrison was probably looking for somebody. I think he was nervous about first timer. I think he probably did a big, oh no, what about this? What about her? What about her? And I said, well, I try that. Don't you think they're a bit old, a bit worldly? We want somebody who's less worldly. So he went through a bit of that. He wasn't thrilled, no. Once it's on, it's on. Harrison's a consummate professional. Once it's it, that's it. You go.